Hello and how are you? My name is Mohindo Mbark and I welcome you to another video of learning how to make web application using PHP and other technologies. So in today's video, we are going to proceed with our database lectures and today we are going to look at the update of a database, the delete of uh, records in a database and uh, we will look also at um, how to select the top, how to select the maximum and minimum, count the average, the sum, the like, and the in. So that's what we're going to cover in today's video. And I hope you're ready to do this with me. So if you've been following, you already have our practice database, uh, where, I mean, our practice table as well as database that we're using for practicing, okay? So uh, we'll go, sometimes you will need to update the records inside your what? Inside your tables in the database. So to update those records, we have a special command that you use to do what to update and that's called the what an update sql so let us go ahead and see how we can uh, update something in what in uh, a table for example i will maybe uh, let us assume that you made a mistake um uh, is uh, 25 not 45 so if you want to do that then you need to write a what an update sql so how do you write this update sql we are going to change the person with this id to 45 i mean to his age to 25. the first thing that you do you first you write it like this so this is a updated okay so you just simply say update and then you specify the table that you're going to update we're going to update the practice table and then you specify what you need to, to update by simply saying set like this set now what do we need to update we're going we need to update the age for example we need to update the age from 25 from 45 to 25 so you just simply say set age equal to uh 25 so after doing that the next thing that you have to do is to put the condition which side which exactly record you want to update Otherwise, if you don't put a condition, then mean that all the records in your table are going to be updated. That is very, 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 very dangerous. So in every update SQL that you write, always make sure that you put the where clause and specify a record or a, a group of records that you need to update. For example, how can we specify that we need to update this record of Mohindom Barak? We can only specify that one not only but one of the way we can specify that is through using its what its id since every record has here its own id so if you want to update this record it is better to, to update it using what its id but you, you can update even using other what other conditions just like the way we did in where so you just put here where remember you already have knowledge about where so whatever we learned in the where condition okay you can as well put it here so i'm going to say where id equals to one so it means going to get for me the records which are having id one and then change their age from wherever they are to this new age that i've specified here so i'll just go ahead and copy it and then come to sql and then run it okay run it so when i run it you can see one row was affected so if I come to this practice table, you can see Mohin Mbarak is no longer having 45 years. I mean, he's no longer 45 years, but rather he's 40, 25. So that is how we update a, what, uh, a record in a table of database. You can as well uh, pass multiple what? Multiple conditions. For example, you say, I want to update also his country. So I want to update his age to 30 and then you put comma and then his country to uh, Somalia okay so it means that it's going to update this and this at the same time so it means that you can even put comma and specify more columns that you want to update in the same SQL and then the most important part is the where condition is where exactly do you want to update otherwise if you forget to put this where then your whole SQL will lose meaning and to just mess up everything okay unless it's how we want it to be to update everything so that's our sql that is going to update 
the age at the country of the user with ID 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and run it by simply coming here to the database and click on um, SQL and then paste it there. So you can see one record was affected. So if you come to practice, now you can see Muhindo Mubarak is having now the age of 30 and he is from Somalia. So that is how we run the update what? Update SQL. That's all you need to know. You just write the set and then you specify the columns and then the where and specify the condition that you need to be met in order this update to be updated. So that is how we do it. Now we can proceed to delete. That's how we do the update. Now we proceed to do what? To the delete. For example, you need to delete some records from your table. What do you do? So you have to write to, write to the delete what? The delete sql okay you have to write the delete sql for example i need to delete this user number 18. so this is how we write the delete sql we just simply say delete from and then you specify the table from practice then the most important part is the where otherwise if you don't put the where then everything in your table is going to be deleted so where is very important so i put the condition where then you specify just like though we did the previous where's where the id is 18 so i can say where the id is equal to 18. so once you run this sql it's going to look for users who have ids of who have id of 18 and then drop them okay so let's go ahead you see we already have here one user who has id 18. let's go ahead and run this sql okay paste it there run it you, you see everything that involves delete the first one you say okay then you can see one row has uh, has been affected okay one row affected so if i click on practice you can see we no longer have the user who has id 18. so that is how we do what that is how we delete so in case you want to delete records with specific conditions you just simply write delete and then you specify the table and then after you give the condition and we have already seen how we can create this condition using the previous where that we looked at so that is how we delete so the next thing that uh, we need to do is uh, so we proceed and uh, learn how to select uh, the maximum value so assume that you want to get uh, the maximum value in uh, a specific column or in a table. So let us say you want to get the uh, the eldest user in this uh, in this what in this table. So there we use what we call max. Okay, we use what we call max. So you can come and learn about this max max SQL max in what in uh, from w3 schools so this is how, how we do it you say select max and then we specify um, the column and then after you do what you specify uh, the table so let us say i want to get the maximum age from what from uh, the users of the maximum age from users okay so to do that, we just simply say, select max, and then you specify the column. For example, want to say the maximum age. So you're going to get a user who has max, I mean, you're going to get the maximum age, okay? From what? From the user. And then you say from users. I mean, from practice. So by doing like that, we're going to get the maximum age, okay? from the user. So go ahead and run this SQL. Can you see? We're having 65. So the eldest person in the user's table has 65 years. Okay. So that's how we select the maximum. Okay. So what if you want to select the minimum? It's just the same syntax. But the only thing here is specify mean. 
so it means that here we're going to get the minimum age in the what in our sq in in, uh, in the table of of uh, practice so you can see we're having the mean as 11. so i mean that the minimum age or the user has the minimum age is what is uh ha is has 11 years okay so now you can as well get the average okay you can as well get the average so in case you want to get the average age so if you want to get the average age you just simply say av average like this is it average i don't know <laughs> average i think yeah average okay so here we'll get for us the average age of uh users of average age in this table okay oh, that's not average select average is it avg let me see um Do, do, do this how you select select avg not average just avg select avg edge then yeah it means that you're going to get the average age from the what from the users table or from the practice table so let's go ahead and run that select everything so come here paste it so you see the average age is uh 23 i mean 32.2 whatever 0.2941 so do you know how we get you know how we get the average age of course it divides it gets the sum of all of them and then divides by the number of all the records so that is how we can get the average so we've learned how to get the maximum the minimum and then the average so the next thing that we're going to look at today is how we can get uh how we can write uh complex complex what complex uh, i mean uh, nested sql so here you can realize that you can realize that uh we are getting only the records okay for example if i say maximum we are getting only the value now assume that you want to get the user who has maximum age so what does it mean it means that you have to you have to nest that sql or you have to combine that S you have to nest it okay so to nest that to nest an sql you just simply say select uh all from users i mean from practice and what is our target right now our target is to get all the users who have i mean the, the user with the maximum age not only the maximum age but we want to get the user who has the maximum age so in here we're going to combine the what we're going to combine the sql by just simply putting where and then in the where condition here you put a bracket i mean you put age equals two and then here you put a bracket now in this bracket it's where we're going to select now a user who has the maximum age so it means that whatever result or whatever a value that will be returned it will be compared to the age and then if that age is equivalent to that what you have specified here then that user or the records of that particular user will be returned so that is how we can nest the sqls so let's go ahead and nest it from here we can say select now here we can write another sql and say select uh max you specify the max and then here you specify the maximum age of course max age uh select max age from practice so by doing like this you're going to see we are going to we are the the the, the, the thing is we are going to select all the records about i mean all the columns about a specific user and the condition is that user should be having the maximum age so the maximum age that will be received will be compared to this one so whoever has the maximum age will be returned so i'll copy this and then i go and run it here and you can see we've got the person who has the maximum age so that is how we write nested 
uh, nested SQLs. So what does it mean? It means that here still you can write your own SQL as long as you return a specific value that can be comparable. Uh, you can also write it here. Can you see? So there are two SQL nested. So for example, I want to give the user who has the minimum age, so I can just simply put here, mean. So I'll be able to get the youngest what? The youngest user. So let's go ahead and write that SQL here. Paste it. You see, I'm able to get the youngest user. So that is how you select the minimum and the maximum. So as we finish or as we conclude, let us learn how we can select from multiple tables. Okay. Sometimes uh, two tables might be related and you may need to select from both of them. So to do that, you're going to create one more table and we see how we can uh, select this um, from multiple tables. Okay. How we can select records in multiple tables. So to do that, uh, we need what you call a primary key. A prim I mean, sorry, a foreign key. A foreign key is, an, uh, is a record or a column that is used to reference another table. For example, you see this uh, is a table of users. Okay. Now assume that you're having another table of maybe um, products. But these products, they might be belonging to users. So it means that a product table must be having a foreign key or must be having a value that will be used to identify its owner. So to do that, let's go ahead and create uh, another table by just simply coming here. I'm going to call it, it maybe products. And then it's going to have an ID. Of course, this ID, I can call it product and let's go ID, product ID. And then after we can specify the ID is an integer and then you make this uh, ID auto increment. Okay. Make sure that you do that for smooth, to having smooth work in your what? In your, in your database. So the next thing, this product will have a name. So I can as well say uh, product name. Okay. Let me just leave this as ID because there's a something that i'll need to explain okay so this product has a name we call it name and then we can call this one also it will have text maybe text it's uh of variable character and then the name should not be more than uh, 255 characters so after doing that the product will have price and then you can just simply put this price maybe will be an integer so those are the three columns that we're going to record about products so let's go ahead and create this table oh now the product will have an owner because this owner, this product must be belonging to someone. So let's go ahead and say owner. And this owner, the only way we can identify an owner uniquely is through their primary keys. Okay. And remember primary keys, we are integers. So we have to leave this column as integer, meaning that it's going to reference. We will, I mean, we will use it for refreshing the what? The primary key of the user. So let's go ahead and uh, create this table. By clicking on save, you can as well first click on preview SQL to see your SQL first. This is the SQL, okay? And then you click on uh, save. So you click on save, you can see we're having now another table of what? Of, pri of products, which is having the ID, the name, and the price, and then the owner. And you know this owner is going to be nothing but the ID of the owner of this product. So let me go ahead and uh, put this product table here. Products table there. Maybe I'll share it with you. So after doing that, so the next thing that we're going to do is now to uh, to put their data into this product table. But before we put their data in this product table, we first need to know the IDs of these owners. Okay. So let us say we see we have owner. I mean ID one, two, three, four, five up to number 17 so what you're going to do we are going to what you're going to do we are going to reference these ids okay we're going to reference these ids so to do that i'll just simply come and insert into the table you know of of, of products to do that just simply say insert into insert into and then you specify the table 
which is called products of course insert into products and then after you open bracket and specify the columns that you need to insert the records to so the, the columns are of course we are having the name so we'll specify the name followed by price and then the owner so after doing that you have to now specify the values by just simply putting values uh keyword and then after putting values keyword then you open bracket and then specify the what the values now themselves that you want to insert so the first value it can be rice okay that's a product then followed by its price maybe twelve thousand and maybe followed by the owner so we, since we know that we have owners from one uh, 30 minutes uh, 15 okay so from one up to five so you have to specify here maybe one so meaning that uh this product is going to begin i mean it's going to be owned by user with id one okay so we can as well duplicate this one okay and then maybe this one can be sugar and then you can see the owner is also id one and maybe the price is 15. we can as well duplicate this one and sell me called salt and then the price going to be maybe uh 1000 and the owner is two let us duplicate this one and call this one maybe uh, uh a soap and maybe the owner is also one so by doing like this it means that we have created some values that we can insert into the table of products let's go ahead and insert them there by just simply coming here and then click on sql and then press enter and then these records will be inserted into what into the products table so if we click on products table you can see we're having uh, some records that have been inserted there so now the question is now how can we get these records connected to their respective owners okay so that's why it comes the magic of selecting from two or multiple tables with conditions so you have to be here very very much careful to see how you connect these two tables so the point is it is product table that is that is depending to the practice table meaning that we are having here the owner and this owner is a primary key of or is a foreign key that is coming from the primary key of what of practice so what we're going to do we're going to select from these two tables and we're going to add a condition that should be satisfied for these two tables to be what to be connected successfully so let's go ahead and do that so we're going to say select all from uh use i mean from products comma uh practice okay so doing like this is going to if we just leave it from there what does it do it's going to cause what you call a cartesian, a cartesian product it's going to get every product and assign it to every user so it's going to be products number and the product the number of users so let's go ahead and uh, run this sql and see what will come up with so what we're doing here we're just selecting from two tables eh? so let's go ahead and run this sql you see we're having uh how many columns so many columns eh? more than the number of users so what what it has done it had got every every product and assign it to every user because we did not specify which product belongs to each specific user so now you're going to see and that's what we call a cartesian product uh everything in a one column is assigned i mean in one table is assigned to everything in another table and when you select from multiple tables now we are going to add a condition that is going to remove this cartesian product or that is going to make it specific so we already know that to connect these users and these ids the only thing is to use what is to use uh is to use the where condition so let's go ahead and do that S i mean is to use the, the the owner column okay is the only thing that relates 
the users call table with the what with the products table so we're going to go ahead and do that we're going to say we add here a where condition and say where so if you want to specify a specific column uh, from a specific table you just simply say products dot owner so what does it mean here it means that you're specifying uh, the owner column in the products table products dot owner equals to uh, practice you know our tables is inside what inside practice equals to practice dot what dot id so it means that we are comparing for the results to show up the id of a user must be equal to the id of a product or the owner of a product then like this these tables are going to be linked then we will not have more Cartesian product because we'll have connected uh, only users who have the specific id are the ones who should show their respective what their respective respective products so if i copy this and go and run it then i'll be able to get uh, specific results you see we're having now specific results okay only for products and their respective users they are being shown here with their respective country or their respective owners so we have here sugar that belongs to this person we have uh, salt that belong to this person and the rest of the products so that is how we, spe we select from what from multiple tables because in many scenarios when you start making a real world application uh, you realize that you will need to select from what from multiple tables so that is how we select from multiple tables that is how we make the nested sql so i hope you are not just watching this as a movie but you watch as you practice so that's it for today i will share this sql file with you and uh, i put the link in the description of this video and uh, that's it for the database introduction i hope you've been following as you've practiced as you're practicing if you're not practicing i really recommend you to really practice otherwise if you don't practice then uh, you're doing your own uh, you're doing disservice to your own self okay so that's it for today and uh, let us meet now to uh, let us meet in the next video we are going to learn how to design uh, database structures the ERD entity relationship diagrams and the rest so i hope you'll not miss and make sure you subscribe to my youtube channel or to this youtube channel and also turn on that notification bell so that uh, you should all you will always be not uh, notified when uh, we post a new video so goodbye and see you in the next video